What's going on, Metalorians? Israel Galindo here from Metalore, and today we bring you the tips and tricks that you should do right away on your Quest 3. This is the best list of items out there, so follow along, and as always, if you get stuck, let us know. Now, before we get hacking, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video, and love the channel. And before we do, let's spin that logo. Okay, so one of the biggest things I personally would add first, first, first is to change, change, and I'll say it again, change the strap from what it came from with the device to an Elite Pro strap. You can find the link in the description below. This is the, again, the first thing that helps with comfort and just makes the hardware feel a lot better on your head for long periods of time. Now you'll notice the difference from the Oculus Pro here to the Oculus Meta 3 where the Pro has a sleek Elite strap design already. As Quest 2, you needed to add the Elite strap, buying it separately. So that's the first thing, again, I suggest for the Quest 3. And you heard me say first thing many times because for comfort, that's what I found best to be. Now let's talk about how to change the strap for the Oculus 3 pretty easily. First, you wanna make sure you're gonna take the sides on each side of it and you're gonna pop against the strap of the plastic towards you. It'll make a pop snap sound. Don't worry, you're not breaking it. And it'll pop away from the device. You also want to unloop the strap from the top. Notice that you're going to need to remove the black plastic cover piece for easy access to the loop connector on the top of the unit. Reverse the process when putting the new Elite strap on the device. It takes a little bit of work, but it's definitely worth the time and money to replace it. Voila! So here's the device now with the new strap on the system. And you'll immediately feel the difference in comfort and stability during those long VR sessions. All right, so for the best tips, let's go ahead and continue. Number one, the display refresh rate for best graphics. From the settings menu, you're going to go to system and then display and toggle on the 120 Hertz refresh rate. Now you will notice that the battery life and heat will be affected as it's consuming more resources and power to make everything look butter smooth. Now tip number two is how to adjust the auto sleep time. How many times have we've actually taken off the headset just for a millisecond and the thing goes to auto sleep? Well, to keep the headset from going to auto sleep too quickly, for the settings, go to system and then power and then change the selection from one minute all the way up to four hours, depending on your preferences. My default is about 15 seconds right now, but I'm gonna switch it over to one minute. Now, as far as tip number three, it's the auto update with power. What does that mean? Well, right now, when you shut off your headset, you will notice that your device is going to tell you that there's an update, if there's one available, and it's going to update as it goes to shut down. This actually allows the auto update to power itself up when it does have an update, when you have it plugged in, of course. And then once it's charging and in the off position, it will actually update the software. So to do this from settings, under system, go to software update, and then toggle the automatically power headset to update. You'll need to be plugged in to see that menu item show up. This will allow the feature to give you all the updates when available without any interaction from you. Okay, moving on to tip number four, VR mode versus pass-through. You'll notice to show you mixed reality when you first turn on the Quest 3, it's actually going to always load in the pass-through. If you don't want that to be that way or vice versa, from settings, go to physical space, select pass-through. If you do like pass-through on, just leave it by default as they have it, then toggle it on. But if you don't want pass-through to always be turning on first and you prefer the VR environment to load first, toggle it off. And then we're gonna go to tip number five, which is set up your physical space. And this is one of the most important that I do recommend you doing. This is so it knows your physical space in the VR sphere of the Quest 3 and giving you and representing a better understanding of your surroundings 
for both room and VR assets in the room, as well as your physical items, which are again represented in the virtual space, best when you are using mixed reality and mixed reality type games. So make sure to set up your room, your doors, your walls, your tablets, your desk, and any other physical area in the room. Now, if you've ever had the privilege of doing swipe typing on your mobile devices, tip number six is definitely the one for you. Swipe typing is another big one that we love to turn on in experimental features. We want quicker typing via a swipe motion to allow faster input via the virtual keyboard instead of the traditional click by letter by letter by letter. This way you're able to swipe across the keyboard and see the menu that comes up as you're swiping along and it recognizes the words that you are bringing up. To do that, you're going to go to Settings, Experimental, Features, and Enable Swipe Typing. Now for tip number seven, we are going to enable hand tracking. And that's actually really good to use, especially if your devices require you just to do hand tracking type games, or maybe your controllers need a little bit of charge and you decide to use your hands instead. To enable this, go to Settings, Movement Tracking, and Hand Tracking. Then toggle on the auto switch from the controllers for hand tracking. This allows you to switch from the controllers to hand tracking automatically by putting down the controllers and putting your hands in front of you. And the cameras will track it immediately. To go back, pick up the controllers and poof, the controllers are tracking again. Okay, now for tip number eight, this is adjusting text and accessibility. This is for us that require larger text or better contracts or accessibility changes. So to do that, we're going to go to settings, accessibility, and then adjust the vision from the left side where you can control the text, the contracts of the screen as well. If you also need anything under hearing, you can do that by turning on live captions and toggling that on as well, which will give you live captions. This is both while you're talking in real time with people, as well as when you are hearing anything from games or applications that are talking in the environment. Okay, and tip number nine is going to be don't want to share your data with Meta. This is definitely advisable for all of you out there. We don't like sharing our private data that sometimes gets leaked out there. So we are going to, from settings, go to privacy, then data and analytics, and turn off all the data toggle to keep your data private and away from shared marketing companies, including Meta. So tip number 10 is how to set up your IPD. IPD stands for Interpopulary Distance. What does that mean? Simply put, it's the distance between your pupils. And also the lens spacing, which is the clear spots of the two lenses inside your headset. So this is to achieve the best image clarity, lens spacing, and your IPD, which means being able to adjust your IPD between 56 and 70 millimeters, which is usually 95% of all adults. If you're not sure what your IPD should be, the best way to look at that is there's a couple of Google searches you can do. Find your IPD or apps that you can also get on your mobile devices that are allowing you to do that. You can also just get uh, your IPD on the mirror by taking a ruler, looking at the millimeter part of the ruler and measuring the middle of the ruler of your open eye and center of your pupil. When you get that number, that is the number that you will be using into your device. But again, I suggest using an app to do that. Okay, so tip 11 is going to be the controller shortcuts. Now, 11 is great because controllers do have shortcuts that we know, but do we know how to take an automatically picture or record a quick video with a controller? Well, to do that, what you're going to do is do a long press of the Oculus button on your controller while you're also doing the trigger button. When you do that, it will actually take a capture of the screen for you. Now to record a video, do a long hold on the Oculus button and the trigger at the same time. When you let it go, it'll begin to record. To stop doing this, 
do the same process and it will stop recording the screen. To find your videos and pictures, you can find them in the photo camera library. Okay, so tip number 12 is going to be customizing your menu. Your menu can be moved, did you know that? The lower menu, if you tap on the outer ring, you can hold and drag it around your screen to your liking. If you tap on the settings and click quick view, you'll see the quick menu. You can also click on the switch video to get the older square box that can also be customized and stretched out. Okay, so tip 13, multitasking. This is one of my favorites because I love to multitask in my Quest 3 headset. This is the best part. So the menu is when you're multitasking and, and doing more than one box at a time. To do this, hold the menu button from the bottom of the screen on an app or on any game and hold it and drag it to the left or to the right of the main centered box. This allows you to add multiple windows to each side allowing you to multitask. Now remember, you can only have three open at once. Okay, so tip 14 is going to be the notifications from your phone into your headset. Yes, we can read our mobile device with our headset on, which pass-through makes it really nice on the Quest 3, but your mobile device can do that as well of just giving you the notifications directly into your Meta. Quest 3. Now to do that, you are going to need the mobile MetaQuest app on your device. And you're going to go into settings on the headset of that application, then notifications and follow the wizard to show you your phone notifications directly in your VR headset. Now tip 15 is going to be playing VR games in your Quest browser. Sometimes you just want to use the Quest browser to browse Google or anything else that you're looking for. But if you open a new tab and look at all the things that show up underneath, these are all free apps available to play. Most don't require a download. It can be used with any Quest headset and are a lot of fun to use. You'll find some really neat games and applications within the browser that you can play. Tip 16 is going to be adjusting the camera settings. This is also one of my favorite because when it constantly records, it records in a square box and not a 1080. And it doesn't really do widescreen, which I like landscape, that's widescreen. So if you want to record a 1080p, go to settings, go to system, go to features, find camera, and you want to set the FPS at 24. Then maximize the bit rate to the best possible. Then in aspect ratio, you can set it to landscape, recommended as I mentioned, or portrait if you like, and set the resolution type to 1080, 720, or whatever you like. I have mine set at 1080, but note that that will take more space when it does record as it is a higher resolution. And tip 17 is gonna be, and we should all know this one by now, is casting to a TV screen or your mobile device. So in order to do that, you need to have Google Cast, Chromecast, or any of the other devices that are connect to your TV or a TV that can handle streaming. So from any device or any game on the VR headset, you can cast directly from your TV to your device. You can do this also by going to your camera and on the top, hit streaming, select your device available to stream, and then you can do that. You can also do that to the mobile device as well. Okay, Metalorians, if you have any tips of your own or you'd like to share with us or any information, we are always happy to help. Add it to the comments and we will reach out. And that's a wrap for today's video, Metalorians. Thanks for tuning in. Until the next time, happy gaming. Roll that logo.